Hey, hi guys. So today we are uh, solving one lead code SQL question and uh, it's average selling price. So we have two tables, prices and units sold. And in the prices table, we have product ID, start date, end date and price. And units sold table, we again have product ID, which is common column. And we have one date column, purchase date and we have units. Okay. So one thing I observed is if you see input, input you'll understand better. So here, if the product is sold on Feb to Feb 2, 2025, then the, uh, then the price will be 5 rupees. Okay, because the uh, date falls between these two dates. Same way, if uh, product is sold on March 1st, then uh, even though product is same, but uh, since the product is sold on a different date and the date falls between these two range, then the price is increased to 20 rupees. So this is a different case. So in this kind of conditions, how you have to apply join, join and how you have to find the average price. That will be a bit different scenario, right? So that's why that is the reason we are discussing this question today. Okay. So I'll tell you in this case, how you have to mention, mention the join and how you can calculate the average price because uh, they, they have asked us to find the average selling price for each product. So average selling price for each product and uh, the average price should be rounded to two decimal places. Let's start working and you will understand better. Okay, I wrote select. Then I'm writing the table names, prices, and uh, I'm giving alias. So then I'm using left join. I'm using left join because in the sum, uh, in some cases, in this example, we have units sold for both the products. But in some examples, what they are saying is, if product do not have any units sold, its average selling price is assumed to be zero. Means it is possible that units sold do not have records in some cases. But we want all the records from the products table. So in that case, when we want all the records from products table, but may not have matching record in right table. In that case, we have to use left join. Okay. So this thing I have told previously also. So just check that condition and then units sold you. Okay. Now you are going to join these two tables. So P dot product ID equal to U dot product ID. Okay, u dot product ID equal to p dot product ID. Uh, then one more condition I'm writing is this is the condition you have to remember. You have to write p dot sorry u dot purchase date u dot purchase date. It should be between u dot purchase date should be between the other two dates. That is the condition you have to remember. Okay, this was the thing which I was saying. So while joining, how to join this with this table in this case? So since there are two dates and the date, according to the date, the price will change. So what I'm taking is I'm taking the date and I'm checking between which two dates this date is falling. And if uh, Feb 2, 25 falls between these two dates, only then I'll join. This Feb 25 don't fall between March 1 and March 22. Then I won't join. Okay, that is the condition which I'm writing here. U dot purchase date should be between P dot start date and p dot end date okay so this is the thing what i'm saying you have to write this condition okay and then uh, then we will go to the question we want average selling price for each product so we want product wise then what we will do we will group by product because we want product wise data so i'm doing group by p dot product id okay now we can go to the finding the average part so in output, what we want in output, we want product ID. So I'm again writing product ID. And for average, what is the formula for average? Whenever, wherever, whatever question it is for average, you have to do uh, units into price by total units. So same thing I'll write here. So units will be, you will get it from U dot units and price. You will get it from P dot price. But uh, so one product might have multiple prices and multiple units. So you have to do sum, right? Why you are doing sum? Because if you see here for each product, there are multiple times uh, the products are sold. So first you will calculate the average of the uh, first you will calculate the sum of this. Then you the, first you have to calculate for this. Then you have to calculate for this. Then you have to add for both because we want average price for each product. Okay, that's why I'm writing sum here. Okay, and now we are dividing it. We will divide it with what? We will divide it with, with sum of units again. Because again, for product one, we have multiple units. So first time it was sold 100, then same product again, it was sold 15. So you want 100 plus 5, right? So we are using sum and u dot units. Okay. Now what we are going to do? 
we are going to write coalesce function here. So why I'm using coalesce function? I have explained this in some other video as well, I remember. Whenever you want to handle this null value condition, then you have to use this coalesce function. Meaning, suppose this, uh, some, uh, some, this total average value, if it gives uh, zero or null value, then uh, actually by what happens is if you give null value, then it won't take, right? So instead of null, you want zero because they have mentioned in question that if a product does not have sol uh, sold units, its average selling price is assumed to be zero. So if this case, this one do not give any particular integer and give some null value, instead of null, we want to display zero. So coalesce will display the first non-null value. So we are providing zero. So it will display zero. When it will display zero, when there is no value for this average. Okay. So to satisfy this condition, we wrote this coalesce. And now we have to round it to two decimal places. So I'm using round and we are rounding it to two decimal places. This is how we round it to two decimal places. Now I'm just using the alias function because they want us to show it as average price name. Okay. Just writing the average price. Okay. Now we will just run it and see if there are any errors. Okay, no, there is no error. So we got the correct output. Let's submit and see if any issue is there with test cases. <laughs> so in this question, you just uh, you just have to visualize it. And if you are not able to understand, take a pen and paper and just practice it once, you'll definitely get it. Okay, this is a easy question, but it's uh, worth noting. I mean, uh, these kind of questions you have to practice. Okay.